So good afternoon. My name is Daniel. I will I will give you the uh, live Q and A webinar. Okay. It seems like I had some issues with the sound. I don't know why. It's uh, it's giving us that. If somebody can confirm that the sound is good, so I'd really appreciate it, and that you can uh, see the chart here. Apparently, I was talking for a minute or two, but nobody nobody heard anything. So if you can comment in the question section that now it's working, it could be good. Okay. All right. So like I said, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the live Q&A webinar. My name is Daniel. I'll be giving you this webinar today. We will begin with a quick introduction to the webinar, what will happen in every uh, step of the webinar. I'll go ahead and say that this is a live Q&A webinar. Therefore, you can ask all kind of questions all along the webinar, regardless of the topic that I'm teaching. So even if, I, even if I'm uh, teaching about leverage and you want to ask something about risk money management, so obviously you can put it in the question section and I will address it accordingly. Uh, yeah, so overall, like I said, we're going to explain what will happen. We'll begin with the common questions, as always, from uh, previous, previous webinars and additional questions that we have added. And then we will have dynamic questions, with our, which are the questions that I've that I've explained that will be written here uh, from the audience. On the third part, it will be a link and a little more into the information side. And lastly, analysis. Okay, analysis will only if we'll have additional time to do so. Okay, otherwise, uh, I'd rather I'd rather give you give you the answers because this is the purpose of this webinar. It's live Q and A webinar. Okay, so let's go through the disclosure, then I'll make sure that the webinar is recorded as it's supposed to be, and we will begin. Okay, so any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for informative purposes only. It should not be constructed or applied as an investment advice recommendation or a suggestion. So I'll be back in a few seconds, and we will begin. Thank you very much. Okay, everything seems in place. We're going to present the uh, questions that we have uh, for the week. Let's see. Okay, how do I pick a good asset to begin with? Okay, I assume that the question is referring to a beginner that is looking for a good asset. Okay, how can I read fundamental report? reports? Okay, when should I try a different strategy? This is, well, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, what? Why must I keep my margin level stable? Okay, that that. It's also very interesting. What is EverProtect and how can I use it? Easy. All right. So we have wonderful questions. Uh, we have a question here from uh, Iqbal Jun. Can we discuss the currency pairs also today, for example? Yeah. I see. I see no reason why why we shouldn't do it. Let me just paste your question here quickly. Uh, how does it work? Will it will it paste it if I do it this way? Let's try. It worked. It worked. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna bring this one. We're gonna begin with how do I pick a how do I pick a good asset to begin with? Okay. So we have we have the uh, notepad here. Okay, we're gonna paste the question and then we're gonna see the answer on the chart. Okay, so first of all, what's the definition for a good asset? Who knows what is a good asset? What is a good, asset? Let, let's say that, okay, so Dave also brought a question in terms of Forex. Where does AvaTrade get its data? Okay, this is also, there is also a very wonderful question here by Dave. Thank you so much, Dave. Let's paste your question here. I hope that it's gonna, wow, already has the numbers. Okay, all right, so we have here the first answer going up or down quickly but not choppy as if up and down quickly. Okay, but what is a good asset? Let, let's take as an example, 
uh, gold. Is gold a good, a good asset? Let's see. Gold, good asset. Yeah, is it good? What makes it an asset a good asset? Let's see. Let's suppose that I think gold is now 1825, right? We're looking at, uh, right? So what, what did I do? I just typed here gold, right? To bring up gold. And I clicked on gold, right? And then it brought up the chart. Here we have the days, which I've changed from weeks, right? So every candle here is a week, but we can never know that unless we change the crosshair from no crosshair to a regular crosshair. And then once we hover across the candle, so it's giving us the information, right? Okay, so I'm gonna change it to one day, right? And in one day, we can see here some kind of a trend. Volatilities make them good assets. Nice, very nice. Okay, but the question is, beside analysis, let's put analysis aside. So let, let me just let me just interpret whatever you, you said here. So first, been told by the, the audience, if I feel that I can analyze, analyze. Okay, so if I feel that I can analyze it, it's a good asset, okay. Uh, look at the fundamentals as well. Okay, so analyze it technically, right? Technically and fundamentally. Right, technically and uh, can analyze it technically and Right. So if I feel that I can, okay, so I have the analysis, but the question is if this asset is good. So let's suppose that I want to trade gold. Now I think that gold is going, God knows, let's suppose that we think that it's going to go somewhere here, right? 1870. And we want to buy just one lot of gold. Okay. One, sorry, one lot of gold. All right. I want to trade one lot of gold. I want to buy it now. Is gold is a good asset for me, right? What What do you think? Is that a good asset? Let's see if we have a question related to margin. What? Why must I keep strategy? Maybe, maybe, okay. Why must I keep? Okay, so we're going to take this question. We're going to try and answer both questions, good asset and margin level. I'm gonna try and combine. Okay, so this is the first question. This is the second question. We're gonna answer them both. Now, so I can analyze this asset, great. Right now, from what I see, one lot is gonna cost me 100, 182,000. This is the value for one lot gold, right? 182,000, yeah, somewhere here. How is the value uh, calculated? This is units, multiply price. Now, if we do it together, it will look just like that. 1826, multiply 100, uh, 182,000, nice. Because we're trading CFDs, guys, CFDs, CFDs, right? Contract for difference. Right, so that means that we are leveraged. And because we are leveraged, we don't necessarily need 182,000. What we need is, 182,000 divided by leverage, right? And now our leverage we see here is one to 20. Therefore, if I am multiplied by one to 20, because leverage is multiplier, right? So what happens is, because I have a multiplier, I can divide the, the, um, the value that I'm using. So my actual margin impact is 9,130, right? Actual 
accrual needed amount. Now, if this is what I need, okay, I have the availability to take this position. I'm telling you this as a fact because I have a, I have 10,000. This cost only nine because of leverage. Now I'm going to ask it the same question I've asked in the beginning. Is gold a good asset for me to trade? Because I can take this position. I can tell you this 100%. I can definitely take this position. Now I have no more, I have no other positions. I have 10,000, it costs nine, it makes sense. Is gold a good asset for me? Let me give you here some hint. 90% exposure to take the position. Not even, I'm not even gonna start explaining how difficult it will be to sustain the margin when I'm using 90% if I'll have to take another one just like that, right? Okay, taking a smaller position would make more sense to have more margin free. Okay. So what are we understanding here? Gold for itself might be a great asset for me to trade, right? But the problem is that the position is too big for me to carry. So for instance, if I change this 100 to 10, right? How much am I using now? How much am I using now? I'm using only nine, right? And if I do this, I'm using less. So gold for itself is not bad. It's not, it's not bad, right? Let's try and go for NASDAQ. Same exercise with NASDAQ. Is NASDAQ a good asset? Let's see. Okay, let's try one lot. Okay, 60, oh, okay, never mind. Can't even do that. Let's try 10. 10, okay. What is the max free margin you would trade with? This is a secret. You're asking me my secret. This is uh, not supposed, I'm, I'm not sure that I can reveal that to you, uh, to you now. <laughs> Maybe later. Let's take, let's take this question and paste it on the, paste it here. Okay, so we understand that the asset itself could be good, but if we compare it with the balance, okay, so let, let's try and do the same exercise with uh, NASDAQ, right? So NASDAQ US uh, Tech 100, so we're gonna look at it. One lot is not even is not even in our range. We need six times as much just to occupy a position. So I've minimized it by 10% uh, to 10%, and now that's just uh, 6,000. Now, I have a very small position. Well, not very small, but I only have 0 0.1, right? Not like gold. And that's gonna cost me 122,000 because of the leverage, so six. Right? Uh, and the usage here is 6.1, okay? So NASDAQ, is it a good asset for me to trade? Look. I took one lot with gold. It was 90% out of the out of the margin. Right now, Nasdaq 6,000. Okay, is that a good asset? I'm not sure. What about if I do that? So 600. So what do we understand from this comparison, guys? What do we understand? Why am I telling you stories about uh, gold and, and and Nasdaq? Okay, let let's take another one. And then perhaps the dime will fall. Let's see crude oil. Crude oil. Okay, there we go. So crude oil. Crude oil, 100 barrels, 0 0.1. That's only 7%. Is that okay? Crude oil, is it a good asset for me to trade? Okay, Tommy, you're saying it makes more sense. Could you please explain? Why does it make more sense? Uh, 
but it's a bigger but it's a it's bigger than before than 600 but it's cheaper compared to to the balance very nice very nice okay so we understand that i can balance between the margin that it's necessary uh, to occupy the position to my account balance and then every asset is a good asset right well not every asset if i'm with a hundred dollars if i wouldn't have ten thousand and i would want to trade even one unit of nasdaq might be difficult but as long as i can take it and the exposure is not too much so every asset could be a good asset as long as i have a good grip on its analysis if i'm looking at this chart and i have absolutely no idea what i'm looking at so it's not a good asset but if i'm looking at the dailies and i find that this is a wonderful consolidation area that i can use in my analysis so it makes sense to me and it's a good asset so what defines the asset if it's a good asset or or or, or not it's not about the hypes that is around that asset it's about yourself as a trader if you think that this asset is something you can trade or not right and also about risk money management now the second question that uh, do we have any questions about this one just just to to be clear on that side is that understood or anybody has anything to ask yes of course i will explain about the other question but i'm asking first if the if the question that we we've explained if anybody has anything to ask before i carry on right so camille you're saying that every asset is a good asset as long with a good plan i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that not every asset is a good asset with a good plan but because again you have to um with a hundred dollar if i would try to trade dow johns just as an example right so right with with as much as even if my plant is uh oh, why why are we still with let's let's see right so even if my plan is the most amazing plan in the world okay with all with all the goodwill right if i had a hundred dollars so yeah you understand camille so the a good plan yeah a good plan is going to make the difference but with a hundred dollar i'm not even able to take this position so this is for sure it's a fact a good plan can have a good impact about a strategy and but at the end of the day it's also involved with uh money sometimes question here by narinder so trading nas 100 is better than trading gold not necessarily not necessarily listen this webinar is recorded i suggest that you'll have a good look at what i've explained okay and how good the asset is oh this is all with caps um okay so we're not gonna paste this question i guess just watch the recording how good the asset is is determined by few things and not just a single thing one of them is, is budget uh, the other one is analysis okay fundamental and technical etc uh what's why must i keep my margin level stable okay so guys we understood uh, oil was perhaps the cheapest asset that we have used in our comparison right and if we look in here i have a, a very important question so why do why must i keep my uh, margin level stable okay in other words i took a position with gold i took a position with uh, what was their uh, nasdaq and many many things and at the end of the day my margin level level let's say is 100 percent right what is margin level we have the balance the balance would be balance that's what i have in my pocket right the margin is 
leveraged funds, right? And the margin level is usage um, margin on the account, right? So for instance, I took a position with gold. I took a position with NASDAQ. I took a position with oil. Right now, my balance is not gonna change unless I close all of the positions that I have, or at least one of the positions that I have. Otherwise, the balance is not gonna change, okay? All of those positions that I took, gold and NASDAQ, right and crude oil all together are used used margin okay if all of them together equals let's say i don't know five thousand dollars okay my free margin will be equal to five thousand dollars this is why from 10 i still can use 10 right now if my free margin is five and I have five, I'm on 50%. Uh, my margin level is 50%, right? What happens if I drop to a point that I can't comply to this position? Let's suppose that I want to take just a little one, uh, just, a, uh, just a little bigger. Okay, so let's suppose that my margin now is 5,000 and i have a position like this right okay so what happens when i can't comply to the margin what happens when my balance when my margin level becomes from 50 percent to let's say 30 percent okay what happens now who knows margin level Margin level from 50 to 30, who knows? That's called a margin call, right? That's a margin call. And when you get a margin call, that's a step before your positions will be closed, okay? So I can do analysis from today till the, the end of the year. But at the end of the day, if I don't have enough funds, like uh, Camille said, that every asset is a good asset as long as you have a good plan. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, it doesn't work this way, right? If I don't have the money to hold this position and the markets flinch against me, right? This example that we've done with gold, right? So let's suppose I want to take one lot of gold. Yeah, I can take it this position, no problem. I can take it, 9,000. But look, if... Uh, gold is going to go against me. Now we are with a buy. That means that we planned the gold to go higher. When we are buying higher, when we are selling, we want it to go lower. So I can take a buy, okay? And I can think that the gold is going to go from 1825 to 1835, right around here, right? We're also going to paint it in green. And I'm getting those nice lines from clicking here on the tiny arrow. Then it falls the list. And from the list I'm picking, okay? Now, if God forbid, okay, if God forbid, I've made a mistake and instead of going up, gold is gonna go against me by the same $10 from 25 to 15, right? Which is here. We're gonna paint it in red. How much can we lose? Let's see here. Okay, one lot. A thousand. What will happen with my account? At this point, I'm already after a margin call. And this position this this position will be closed because I can't comply. Right? I don't have enough margin to comply. So in other words, when I can't comply to the margin impact, I will have my position closed. Okay, this is I must. This is the reason why I must keep my margin level uh, stable. Okay, so the answer for this one is when I can't comply to the margin impact, my position will be closed. And the answer for the other one is 
uh, if asset is good or not defined by budget and a plan. All right, so we're gonna paste those question uh, the answers, of course. This one to begin with. This was, I guess, here somewhere. Let's see if we can make it a little smaller. Yeah, should work. And the other one. Yes, perfect. All right, uh, do we have any questions so far? Do we have any questions about anything that I've explained so far? Okay, great. How can I read fundamental reports? Reports are fundamental analysis. So fundamental reports is not really, how can I read reports? Okay, that makes sense. Now, we're gonna take the question and we're gonna see, uh, first of all, what is, in, what, what, what is a, a report? What kind of report are we analyzing? Okay, so fundamental analysis, right? Fundamental analysis is what reports are for as a trader. And to read reports, we usually have three uh, things that are in the report. Do I have it here? Nice, very good. So as an example, as an example, let me see if I can show it to you on the calendar. So if I click here on the three lines, and I go to Trading Central, I can see Economic Calendar. And in Economic Calendar, I have all kind of information regarding the reports. Let's see if I can find here something interesting. Yesterday, I believe that we had the inventories. Okay. This also, this also could be interesting. All right, so I don't think there is anything too much of a, you can see, by the way, you can see the importance by looking at this column. By looking at this column, you can see a low, see the impact medium, low 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 and i can also filter let's see if i can filter by the high okay there we go and now all of those are countries we have here japan we have here uh germany hungary right denmark us okay personal income this might be good okay so this report Personal income refers to the income that a person receives in return for their uh, provision of labor, land, and capital used in current production plus current uh, transfer receipts. Uh, okay, so this one, where is the okay? Because it hasn't been so. Let let's let let's see together this this report, right? So this one shows the personal income that uh, for an individual we're not going to explain too much but just the idea now let's examine this this report okay and let me ask you a question we have here a few things we have the actual foreign previous actual forecast right Now, for instance, the actual hasn't arrived, obviously, because the report is not, has not happened. When is the report happening? Let's see. 24, oh, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. As you can, uh, as you can see, Friday, it's written here. Okay, so this report shows uh, some signs whether the economy is doing well or not. 
right? Similar to the uh, NFP, to the non-farming payroll. Now, because the uh, the report isn't here yet, we don't have the actual, but we have the forecast and we have the previous. The forecast is 0.7%. 7, the other one is 0.2, that's the previous. Okay, now, what do you think? This is the, the, the forecast is less than a percent, right? This is what we expect. So we expect the growth in the percentage when the previous was 0.2. What do you think will happen if the actual is gonna be higher than the forecast? That the percentage will be higher? What do you think will happen if the actual is going to be this way? Okay, as an example. Is it good for the economy or bad? This is, again, this is this supposed to show the return of somebody's work of how much he he gets supposedly okay maybe this one is is a bit difficult maybe i shouldn't have started with something so financially complex um let's take yeah yeah i assumed i assumed that this is a bit difficult Let, let's just take as an example let's take this i do some i give lectures a bit more advanced and this one was a bit too difficult. I'm so sorry, guys. Let's go with something easier like Facebook. All right. Right. So the the report with Facebook. Let's suppose that Facebook has an income, right? Facebook, the uh, previous income. Let's suppose. Let's check Facebook annual revenue this is 113 right let's take this figure yeah okay this is something that i googled didn't do anything special this is the revenue this is the right let's see okay Right. So this is this is uh, Google. This is a uh, Facebook's revenue. Okay. Let's suppose that right now. Let's suppose that the, the previous income was this. This number. Okay. The forecast is 120. This is what we assume that. Uh, Facebook is gonna is gonna is gonna have this year. Right. 2023. And instead of 120, they got forbid put 115. Okay, just two billion more, maybe a, a billion, a billion and a half more than previous. Okay, again, I'm saying just a billion more, but just to understand how it looks, right? So this is how it looks. Now, um, yeah, billion. So what do you think will happen on the day? of the forecast. We have two dates. We have the actual when Facebook announced. Let's suppose that report date is um, first to first, right? We have the earning season scheduled. I'm not really sure what will be uh, Facebook's announcements because there is almost a year forward, but, um, but let's suppose, okay, 2024, this will be the annual report for Facebook, right? That report showed us that the income was 115, right? Billion, billion dollars, yeah, 115, okay? And the forecast was, like I said, the forecast was higher. Forecast was higher. We expected uh, Facebook to generate much more money. Okay, but it's better than the previous. It's better than the previous. 
So in this case, why do you what do you think that will happen on the day on the day that the forecast was announced? Not on the day that Facebook released its report, the day that the forecast was released. Right? That we expect more money. What do you think? Facebook is gonna go up or down? Might go higher, okay, might go higher. Even though Facebook hasn't showed its report, even though there was no numbers for Facebook, still you think that because of the forecast being higher, you think that it can go higher, right? Excellent, great. What about when the report will actually come? When it will be 115? When it will be 115, will it still keep going up? Or it will go down. You're asking for short term or long term, but this is my job to ask the question here, sir. So long term or short term, you tell me. What do you think will happen after the report has been released? Down and then up. Okay, interesting. All right. So the idea, guys, when you're reading a report is to acknowledge that usually when you have the forecast, you expect the forecast to be the forecast to be similar to the performance. If it's higher and the performance was better, so the company is making progress and you would expect the company to respond with positivity. OK, if God forbid it's the other way around, we understand the nature of things. OK, do we have any questions regarding that uh, part? before we can move on any questions regarding regarding uh, what i've explained excellent right janet you're asking if it will work with all of the assets i would say yes but it's not 100 percent of the time Okay, there are a lot of different things, a lot of different things. So even if the report is good, but a company is not doing well, right? Some companies can show earlier reports that are good, but a company's performance, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not at the highest point, right? Some companies. Some companies recovered, some companies are still uh, are still recovering. Okay, so let's move on. How do we report? So like I said, there is forecast, previous and actual. We're gonna paste, we're gonna paste those few elements and then previous, forecast and actual. This is the real order of how it's supposed to look like. There we go. Yeah. All right. So what other questions do we have? All right. So the next question is, when should I try a different strategy? So guys, when do you think, why did I write it on previous? right so what do you think when should i try a different strategy and why would i try a different strategy what do you think okay what is swap in trading Okay, this is an excellent question. We're gonna paste this question here, but it's swap. Actually, you know what? Let's solve this one right away. Uh, what is swap? Swap is overnight fee when holding a position for more than a day. I will be paying percentage a percentage of my position. 
right? So for instance, I took a position with silver and I'm holding it over a day and my position's value is 200,000, right? So if my swap, as an example, is 0.02%, right, as an example, right? So if this is the value swap, let's suppose that it's 0.2%, 2%, right? So I'm going to multiply 216 by 1.02%, and this will be $43 per day, equals $43 per day, right? All right, does this make sense, uh, Narinder? Does this make sense? This is the swap. This is the swap, this is how it works, okay? All right. All right. So the, the question that we have here is when should I try a different strategy? If my uh, my strategy doesn't work, right? Doesn't work. If I already have a position, a strategy that works, and I want to improve, if I want to try um, another strategy, right? So whenever I want to try a new strategy, when should I try a different strategy? Let's suppose that I've tried a certain strategy. I've been trading for a month now. It didn't work. Okay, I tried for two months. It didn't work. Perhaps I should try a different strategy. But also, if I have a, a strategy that works and I'm making money with it, I can try something else at the same time, okay? If I have the time and, and the money, shouldn't be a problem. So this question, when should I try a different strategy? Basically, whenever you want, but uh, it could be a solution for somebody who got stuck and then if it doesn't work, so you want to try something new and improve the situation. You can always go back to the previous strategy, okay? If my strategy doesn't work or if I want to try another strategy, there is really no other uh, logical explanation for that. So we're just going to keep it this way, right? Logical question, logical answer. What else we have here? How do you use of a protect, right? D did we get all of them? Not really. How to use of a protect? Okay. Can we discuss the currency pairs also today? Okay, whoever asked me this question, what would you like me to, to say as an example about your USD? Uh, in terms of Forex, what, where does Evertrade get its data? I suggest contact, contact your senior account manager. Yeah, I, I don't think that this is something that I can answer here in the webinar. I am not in this position. Okay, this is something a bit more formal rather than, uh, yeah. So ask him and I'm sure he will, he will give you a good answer. What is the max free margin you would take a trade with? Who well, asked me that? Who well, asked me that? Okay, so what is the free, uh, the max free margin you would trade with. Look, I like to work, if you're asking my opinion personally, I like to work with between five to 10%. Up to five to 10%, this is the max uh, occupy for my margin. The reason is that the market is very liquid and dynamic, and I like to have the ability to maneuver with, 
I don't like to be pushed to the corner and then my decisions are different than uh, when I'm using a small percentage. Okay, so I always try and make my capital as bigger as possible and my positions, I wouldn't say as small as possible, but relatively, relatively useful, right? If I take a position with 0 0.01 when I'm planning to make a thousand, that's a problem. But I'm also not going to take 10 lots trying to make a thousand if the position is uh, too expensive. Okay, so always make in comparison. I'm sorry, guys, that my my answers. I got this feedback from uh, from my my audience that my my answers has a range. It's not a formula that I cannot give you an answer black and white and then you know it's it's a solution it's always a range um okay so this is regarding that this one i would like to get elaborated otherwise uh, i'm not sure what what can we discuss <laughs> there is a lot there are a lot of things to discuss with currencies uh what is the free margin you would use this we already answered um Personally, no, no need, no need. I already gave, I already gave the my my answer. Uh, yeah, I think that we covered most of the things here. This is pretty much covered with an account manager. This one needs to be elaborated. All the questions was the oh, okay. We need to show Ava Protect. So before we show Ava Protect, I would like to give you guys, like I said, the nice links over here in the information uh, page. And this will be pasted through the chat. So we're going to take this one and we're going to paste it in the chat. This is for the, uh, for the Avago. That one is to make a deposit, right? To increase your margin or to even start. Maybe the account is not even running, so you can make a deposit and start moving. Uh, Fact and help sent right. This is for, and this is, this is exactly for the question. When was the question here? You see to contact the account manager. So you can also as, as much as you can go to the live center, to the help center, and you can ask them. It's also, it's the same. Uh, real account, this is for somebody who is still on the demo and want to upgrade to the business. And this is for the academy, right? So this one is gonna, uh, it's for the, for the economy, okay. We have nice tutorials there, videos, all of nice things. And the last one is live Q&A, the special promotion, the one-on-one -on -one premium market review. This will be given at the end of the webinar, or perhaps, you know what, perhaps I should give it to you now. Perhaps I should give it to you now. This is something you can give to your senior account manager, and he will give you a personal one-on-one -on -one premium market review. Um, this is, I think, beside the webinar, which is very straightforward and practical. This is the second most practical thing that I would recommend, right? To have a market review with an account manager. Okay. Now, we're going to see the last question that was uh, that we didn't answer. Okay, Ava Protect. So Ava Protect, what it does is it lets you protect the position for a certain time frame. Therefore, if I click here on the box, it's going to let me choose the time. And for instance, if I have uh 100 units okay and it's gonna go up by a dollar from 21 to 22 i'm gonna make 116 dollars and if it goes down by a dollar i'm gonna lose potentially 116 okay okay this is our protect and this is silver and we have two scenarios Okay, I think I believe that we have done this yesterday. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure if it was silver or something else. Never mind. Always good to refresh. Refresh the memory. Right? So I am going to explain to you all of the nice things that I've written down. Returned right yeah all right uh is this just for silver gold and forex the answer is yes at this point still developing so 
forex, silver, and gold, maybe in the future for something else as well. So in this scenario, right, we are buying. That means, like I said, that we potentially aim uh, for the asset to go higher, right? And if we're selling, so we're selling, we're planning the asset to go lower. If we're buying, and this is, let's put this one is in, in green, the other one is in red. Regardless if it's realistic or not, I can tell you up front, those are monthly candles. Uh, I'm not sure it will happen in an hour, not even in a day, but again, we're just explaining the, the product. Now the product works in a very, very simple way. Ava Protect uh, lets you protect the position for a certain time frame right and whatever you lost during the coverage you will get back okay excellent so the profit here is 116 the last year is as well 116 uh, actually 117 right the fee stays the same and this one is a minus this one is all also a minus because it's a profit it's a plus and this one is a minus and this is a plus now what happened here what happened here what happened here is we took a position okay with gold 21.5 and it moved towards let's suppose that it got to the take profit right 22.5 now it's bouncing but never mind Okay, and the idea is that uh, here the net is 116 because we've made profit, but we paid the fee. Okay, so we are left with 94. In here, we've lost 117, but thanks to the 22 that we've paid. Okay, we, let's see, 117 minus 22. 95 okay 95 this is what we are left with now this is how it works this is how it works if i take a buy and it gets to one of the stop loss or the take profit it will trigger them and this is the results okay again i'm telling you that those are monthly candles so it's not sure that it will get to 22.5 okay it might take it more than a day but still the idea is the idea stays the same okay i'm gonna say a few things a this is not mandatory to use okay neither neither take profit or stop loss okay i can also trade without them but it was just to show you the proportions of what can happen if right this just to show you are there any questions regarding anything that we have explained so far <clears throat> we roughly have five minutes, I believe. Four minutes. Do we have any questions regarding anything before we disclose for today? All right, Sean, you're asking me what's my favorite assets. Like I said to Miss Jeannie, I'm not going to reveal my secrets on this webinar. But if you're asking my personal opinion, I can tell you that I like uh, commodities and stocks, sometimes indices and currencies. Okay, and this is give or take. Any more questions? Thank you for the question though. Any more questions regarding anything? Of course, of course. So it's been a pleasure, guys. I'm happy that you enjoyed, and uh, I wish you all best of luck with your trading. I hope that you'll make a lot of money, a lot of profits, and join us next week. Let's see if next week we're going to have one. No, unfortunately, no. Look, unfortunately, next week... <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to give you the webinar, but it's likely that I will have somebody to replace me. And then, of course, you will be able to enjoy the live Q&A still. But anyway, like I said, I wish you all good rest of the week. It's been a 
pleasure uh, doing the webinar today. So have a best of have best of luck and have a good day.